guitar studded car today. What do you think the other guys are doing to prepare? Paul's probably knocking down a Celsius energy drink. Eagle's probably eating a tofu sandwich. And Simon's probably polishing off another large pizza. Why didn't we have breakfast together? Because I was sleeping. Because you eat tofu. Not all the time. Most and I went time. to a perfect, I went to a beautiful diner this morning and I had sausage links and bacon <laughs> and eggs. And I just felt like it was the ultimate prepare meal. Hey, I didn't get you anything for your birthday yet. What do you want? Course record birthday round, that's all I need. How do you prepare? I like to do my disc golf strong morning ramp. I like to drink a green juice and then protein shake with any nuts and seeds? Granola with nuts and seeds. And then I like to brush my teeth. You're 150 feet out. Sand trap directly behind the target. What's the plan? I'm running it. Oh, but. Did you brush your teeth? Yeah, twice. Twice, gosh. Gotcha. Because I, I went double nap this morning. I went, I wake up from my sleep, get breakfast, and then power nap. So it's two brush teeth circles, cycles. Two brush teeth circles? <laughs> yeah. Roller. Two. Roller. Pull three. Roller. Pull four. Roller. Pull five. Roller. Do you feel pumped? Are you ready to play? Yeah. Warmed up? Warmed up. Strong? Disc golf strong. Pull six. Roller. Pull seven. Roller. Pull eight. Roller. Pull nine. Pig off the tee. Huh? Pig roller. Pig sidearm into the basket. Pig putt. Easy birdie. You want to know what today is? I was walking in Memphis. No. Nope. Today is going to be the day that I'm going to throw it back to you. And right I now, I somehow realize what I got to do. do. I don't I believe that anybody, anybody feels, feels the way I do about, about you now. <laughs> you? You? Me? I'm ready. Let's go. Let's do this. Hello and welcome to another day in our lives. We're at the Portland Open round two coverage, Glendevere Golf Course. It's Nate Sexton. It's Jeremy Colling. It's the Disc Golf Pro Tour and it's Paul Uliparty. <laughs> I can't believe what we just watched. And I can't believe what we're about to watch right now. Ricky Wysocki leading the field, eight under par. Great starting round here at Glendevere. Roller. <laughs> <laughs> Paul McBeth, one shot back at seven under par, zero OBs, not too many of them, but there are some very important places to OB, to avoid the OB. Tied with Macbeth, we've got Eagle McMahon, many people's favorite out here. And what a treat, both crush boys, Simon Lazat. This is a dream card of two years ago, this year, the future. This is just fantastic. And Simon's already had more than one dream today sounds like he's, <laughs> he's a couple times he's a couple in so that's nice hole one 540 going downhill really excited to see if anybody tries to bite off a little bit more here i think this one so far has been mostly a layup play for the majority of the field a couple players kind of getting aggressive and trying to go for it i, I gotta think somebody on this card is looking Up for it first on the pad out of campo Bello, south carolina Winner of the 2021 challenge at Goat Hill. Sponsored by Innova Champion Discs, we have Ricky Wysocki. Very happy birthday, birthday to Ricky Wysocki. What is he? Is he 28? 27? Something like that. I think 28 sounds right. Happy birthday, Rick. Not even Ricky's going more than just the simple hyzer there with the destroyer. Thank you. Thank you. 
second on the tee out of Huntington Beach, California. Winner of the 2021 Dynamic Discs Open. He is sponsored by Discraft. He is Paul Macbeth. So it seems like for the, uh, the league group, they decided to go a little bit more serious accolades. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I'm stepping up here and they're calling out 2005 winner of this, and these guys are getting <laughs> legit. I mean, I guess I need to win more big tournaments. Yeah, maybe they forgot that you won something <laughs> at some point. <laughs> They're like 2016 U.S. champion Jeremy Colling. Nope. Nope. <laughs> I got the Tupelo Bay invitation. <laughs> <laughs> and I was happy that they said it. Good shot. Come on, run up straight. Run up straight. There okay. is a, that's a birdie look. That's a McBeth territory. He's going to have that low ceiling cypress in the way. Out of Boulder, Colorado. Winner of the 2021 Disc Golf Pro Tour OTB Open. He is sponsored by Discmania Discs, Eagle McMahon. I'm actually a little bit angry with Eagle. Yeah, me too. That he hasn't gone after it with the sidearm. I know he has it. Yeah. I know he has it in there, and I just would really like to see him get aggressive. That's a very selfish thing to be upset about, but I am also selfishly upset. I feel like it's all right. I have to watch him. Yeah. True. He's going backhand. I gotta oh. think that's a more aggressive play. Thank you. Is he listening well, we, to us? We really, I really want to see what happens if Eagle goes all outsider. Can he get the distance? We'll have to find out another day. Oh boy, it got burned over. And as you can see, that wind is ripping out here today. It is certainly much more of a factor than it was in round one. On top of that, we've got rain. Lead card action out of Shrewsbury, Massachusetts. Winner of the 2020 Vacation Land Open. Sick. He is sponsored by this medium. He is Simon Lazak. It's kind of a silly one. Simon going PD2 here. I believe this is... I think he's going to get a little bit aggressive here. Yeah, how, how could this be a layup with a wide rim? I don't, I don't see it. He just, <gasps> oh. oh, no. Yikes. Oh, and that's and OB. OB. How is that OB? No way. You have to cross. To, so it's a re -tee or what? It is a re -tee. Okay. Wow. What a tough way to start the day. And that is the conservative shot. Not going to take more than just the five. Very wise play. He could no easily way. get aggressive no there, way. and he has plenty of distance, as we all know, to get to the basket. But taking his medicine right away and going to try to save that double bogey. Good shot. Nice touch there. Rick, this is one of those rounds where you needed to pack both your sunscreen and your umbrella. The sun was coming out. The rain was pouring. The wind was blowing. Then it was calm. It's just a traditional Oregon-type weather day. You don't you like the weather? A, just wait 10 minutes. You needed hand warmers. You needed a fan. <laughs> yeah, it, it was just all over the place. Wow. Bad double bogey for Simon. That was really errant and unfortunate to stay short like that. And after Paul's great shot, look, he's got to go to the knee to even have a look at it. Oh, and man. Surely that was online. That looked great. He's smiling. Yeah, he knows that was, uh, that was a good run. So we're going to have three pars and a double bogey to start the round off. Again, showing the difficulty of this hole, the fourth hardest hole of the course, where it was the uh, second hardest in round one. Two birdies on the day. Nico Lucastro, Noah Mainzma. Nico's birdie, really cool. Roller past the basket, circled OB, circled back, jump putt in the basket. Wow. Very cool. Hole two, I mean, right away you have that little gap. Unfortunately, we don't have to go through there because we have, what, four feet to the left. They're going to be throwing big Anheusers as far as they can, maybe even a couple rollers. And then the real tough part is then throwing it into this tight green right here with the big trees surrounding the basket. Probably a couple Anheusers coming in here soft and a couple sidearms as well. Ricky electing hey. to go off the tee pad. It's really a big gap. I mean, yeah, it's like so close to the tee that it barely feels like one. Exactly. I think the problem is is the 
tee pad was a bit spongy and a little slick when it rains as well. Ooh, that's crushed. Yeah, nice Anheuser angle, getting that extra distance with plenty of height to get that fade back at the end. That maximized all of what that uh, disc had behind it. It's going to be a very short approach. Jeez. It's just airs past Paul's. Wow. Boy. Simon, this is going to be dude. contesting those Doug Furs on the right side. It gets through. Simon parring this one in round one. Definitely going to be control. looking to clean up that approach here. Paul with this wide forehand. Oh, oh wow. Tree. Coming in a little hot, but that's the miss, I think. Yeah, Want to be a little long. There's a lot of trees on the short side. And just like Yuli yeah. called, some soft Anheusers as well. Oh. Wasn't soft enough, though. He's <sighs> oh in the danger of... He's got to make a putt from edge of circle to avoid uh, going par-par in the easiest hole in this course. Classic overcorrection. First day, leaves it a bit um, left, doesn't turn it enough, and then today turns it a little too much. Yeah, yeah for sure. And just the slowest, most overstable approach to this that Eagle has, forehand chip to the green. How far do you think that drive is? 580, 590? Yeah, it's upwards. Upwards of 600. Not quite 600, but I, I'm sure he didn't have much more than 220 to the pin. I've missed that putt. I've missed watching that nose up spin putt that Simon is so well known for. Oh. I've, I've missed that putt. I thought you were talking about. I made a career yeah. out of missing yeah. that putt. <laughs> I thought I, w I was going to say, yeah, a lot more than once, Jeremy. I mean, yeah. I played yeah. enough times to see you miss that putt. Okay, let's talk about Simon and how good of a putter he is. Sure, did, sure have missed him. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just such a. Such an effective putting style, you think that there'd be more yeah, people that try to emulate Simon's chance. style because it just, it brings the 60 footers into play. Well, yeah. And, and, it, and you're not zipping past the basket either. It's just a nice little nose up angle, just gliding in there. It's a, it's a spin putt, so it's that feast or famine thing, I think. And we've seen, sure. we've seen both sides of that coin with Simon, but so far today and this week, he seems to be on it. And more often than not, he is, I think. Hole three, par four, 777 feet. The drone flew straight up the middle, but I expect most of these guys are going to go on the left side using that newly widened tee pad, try to kind of cut the corner. Although, right as I say that, Rick, you know, go up the middle. I think Ricky has got to a point in his career Gosh. where he is so not phased by gaps that he's so he's looking so far past the gaps that in a way maybe they're even like shaping his shot. Sure. And uh, yeah, he's got so much power at the back end that he doesn't need the roller to get to his, the landing spot. You can see the rain starting now. Paul going to challenge these trees. Perfect. Oh, yeah. Shit. Yeah, it's yeah, so just good. Just boost through them. Yeah, so good. Jump foot. Wow. That first little hill there is kind of the indication of getting inside 240, something like that. So it's just going to be a very short pitch for Beth. And we saw Eeks go out of bounds here yesterday. This is okay. ripped, but it might be curling quick enough. Yeah, I think he's made the correction and stability. And if not stability, at least the angle was changed. It was yeah. certainly in no danger of going to be long here. today. I'm honestly surprised yeah, that more people so aren't going good. up the middle, you know, walking the course. 
We had a left, or you guys had a left to right tailwind there, which was really pushing them right down that fairway. And if you land on Heiser on that hillside, they kind of boost towards the basket, and you have about only, I'd say, 300 into the pin. And in the length of time from their tee shots to their approaches, there is sun. There's shadows on the ground. <laughs> it's just Ooh, just sucks. checks up before the so OB. Bad. Edge of circle putt. So bad. For me, the difference comes down to if you take the backhand like Ricky did and you go straight up the middle, the first tree you could possibly hit is about 250 feet from the tee. And if you take that roller and you execute it, the first tree you could possibly hit is like 400 something feet down there. So that's that's the that's what comes into play for me when I'm making that decision personally. It's like mm. if I go that way, I can go really far before I have to get lucky or not lucky. Sure. Paul does great work with his Luna, setting up a short birdie putt, as does Ricky with his pig. Simon, however, he has to work. Mm. It doesn't oh. cold. Cut that out. Eagle made the same mistake the day before. We saw Simon kind of overcorrect. Let's see if Eagle can drop this one a little bit lower and card that birdie. It is a little bit lower. It's a lot lower, but it's in for the bird. Rick is in for his birdie. Good start for Ricky and Eagle, and seemingly Macbeth is going to have also a two under start. And he does, so hot start here for our feature group. Simon in need of a couple more birdies here. This is the easier of the two nines, and you definitely want to get your scoring done here on this run. Hole four is a par three that baits you down the tunnel, but really doesn't offer the best fairway. Most players are going to be going that outside Anheuser or backhand roller route, try to bring it up here in this grouping of Douglas Firs. It's tough, though, with the angle of the tee pad. It is a difficult approach angle to go down the out the outside. Crazy tail or headwind today, which was pushing, making this shot right here absolutely incredible. Wow. And I don't know if that really affected the flight there at the end, but it looks like Ricky hit a down branch that may have slowed down another five, six feet. Taking it from tapping range to super tapping range. Yeah, I was going to say, luckily, it's the guy who cares the least about the difference between, like, <laughs> exactly. 27 and 35. And this is a very common result with the way that the wind was blowing, is that a lot of rollers got cut out early, didn't have a chance to really wrap all the way back to the right. I thought if there was a day to go up the middle, today was kind of that day with that headwind because you could keep it low and with a stable disc kind of keep it straight while penetrating forward. Oh, and Eagle's going back in Anheuser. And is that his FD3? Was that a Huck Lab die? I couldn't tell. If it was not, then it was a splice, which Whoa. is very overstable. I'm pretty that sure seems it, unlikely. Most likely is FD3. So I watched the card before them, the chase card. And they all came up extremely short with these shots, which is just showing you how well yeah. they executed these ones are actually being thrown. That's a really nicely thrown shot from Simon, just a bit too high. Here you can kind of get that wind effect with uh, Paul's shirt there. Great height, just so long. That wind really coming up the fairway that's going to Proved to be a tailwind on this next shot. Oh, geez, there it is. Yeah. With that spin motion, he really doesn't seem to be affected so much by his stance. So he can straddle out. He can go down to a knee. He can do the traditional stance, and he's able to keep that arm swing consistent. Yeah, the legs are not as involved as with a lot of other putting styles. Ricky does come up short there, so maybe the branch did eh, play a factor. I'm So now Eagle takes the lead on the card. Thanks. Tied up with Ricky.
by that lead, I mean that he's currently leading the round. That commercial, man. Look, I, I played saxophone in middle school. It never sounded like that. I don't know what you got to do to get that that tone, man. Wow. <laughs> I don't know if the Patreon subscribers get to see what we do during those commercial breaks, but we break it down. <laughs> we are dancing. <laughs> Hole 5, par 4, 636 feet with the hazard bunker just short and the OB path just long. This is a very easy hole to roll OB long, apparently. Yeah, suit you, you know, talk about your own self. <laughs> Eagle definitely in danger of that if he doesn't choose the right stability. I think that he's going pretty understable to avoid that long rollout. That's just in the middle of the fairway. That's a good shot. Yeah, that's great. Is this playing as the easiest uh, on the course? It's I, the I could imagine. It's the second easiest. Hole two is the easiest hole on the course. Okay. But they're both pretty similar. They're both in that 0. 0.6, 0. 0.65 range. Yeah, the first few holes, it seems like you got a kind of a gap yeah. off the tee. Oh. Get it in play, and then a real touchy oh, up shot. Oh, man. If that ever stood up and turned over, that could have been in that long eagle putt range. That's still going to be really good. Probably a jump putt. That's great. Yeah, he's going to have a very, very easy, and nothing in the way. Mm -hmm. That tree is gone. Well, from his angle. Ricky, that seems a little bit wow. overturned for the big distance, but maybe not. Well, I don't know. A lot of speed. Oh, okay. Calling for a sit. Yeah, that could go in the bunker. Yeah. Wow. Okay. He'll have a birdie putt from inside the circle, though. Yeah. It was just curling right to the pin. Yeah. yeah, it was. But that bunker, I mean, as annoying as that is, the bunker absolutely makes this hole. Without that bunker, you got nothing. So yep. it has yeah. to be there. I mean, you can say as much as you want, that's so unlucky. But well, most drives aren't getting in that 500-foot range. So no, that, no. That approach shot over that blind bunker, it's, I mean, you really can't see the back edge of the lip. So you really have to just trust your distance. We saw some really great approach shots in round one, but... There's yeah, it's be. pretty funny. I feel like the designer was placing the no, placing the bunker there for the upshots, not necessarily yes. worried about right. the drives. <laughs> but also that that five feet out that you get to go now and, and throw. Yeah, it makes that roller possible. That roller was. Oh no! Wow. Macbeth leaks ob long costly. Damn, it is just close enough to go jump hut. But yeah, when when that tee pad wasn't widened, the roller was an option, but not to get this far. Easy birdie. <laughs> yeah. OB stroke and birdie at the same time. That's a rare occurrence. Appreciate that, dude. And so far this weekend, we have not seen any eagles anywhere on the course. And this is certainly the one. To, to yeah, I'm kind of surprised we haven't yeah. seen one in this hole, honestly. So Me many too, big, Nate. So many big <laughs> power players. I would have thought somebody. Me too. Simon to one under. There's wow. a good battle. And on to hole six. I think one of the potential signature holes on this property. This one has the initial gap and then breaks right down the hill. You've got OB wall on the left side. So if you do try to get aggressive with a big turnover and you don't quite hit it hard enough, you could go OB left. Then you got these, what what was it, church pew bunkers or yeah, something? Yeah, something like that. I like that. We got a really, really tight grain, three bunkers in play, golf green left, and also some OB on the right side. So this is certainly the scariest green on the course, especially considering most people aren't Eagle McMahon and they're approaching it from some distance. He actually is going to be approaching it from some distance as well. He, he actually burned that over more than I thought. Mm -hmm. Really the only trouble is that left side out of bounds line a lot of cut rollers will go in there and air shots that aren't turned over enough uh, again i talked to the spotter and he said that only one was a casualty of that right side ob i played with him i saw that right side ob okay roller off the tee yeah well, that's what he said roller we got away from him good angle for simon that's well down the fairway this should set up for a inside 300 foot approach 
Get off, dude. Really Seriously. close and tight to that tree that I've hit two rounds in a row now. <laughs> And I think I think these guys are catching kind of a little windier section of the of today at, at this moment. By the way, these are flying. By the way, those furs are flapping. Curious to see how aggressive they get. I I oh, don't yeah. believe that's very far off the tee. And no. coming into that green, they have all of 380 to the hole, I, which is tough to land something soft. This is upwards of 400. Yeah, 380 is. As close as I could possibly yeah. be. Look at the angle control. Yes. That is just so freaking good. That is so good. Just It doesn't look like he's putting any exerted effort into it. Just turning his body on. This just does what he's just thinking it'll do. Does this have enough height? Uh, no. It doesn't. Just short. And that's going to be a sizable putt. Yeah. Eagle here has got probably 360 in, and that's fantastic. Exactly. Eagle inside the circle for another five consecutive birdie streak on this course in two rounds, if that, he makes that. That's where you got to do it. These first holes are the ones you got to pick up. That back nine gets pretty ferocious. Good shot. Nice angle Good control shot. from Simon. Scary little par save attempt here. Oh, Ooh, close. Gosh, I, that takes a lot of courage to run that putt. Even if you're Ricky, that is a scary putt to run, especially with that wind blowing. So look who had their tofu sandwich this morning, man. This guy is on a roll right now. That was such a good approach shot. That was such a good approach shot. Do you know what that orange thing is? I don't. Paul? I'm sorry? His approach disc? Yeah, yeah. Was that, a, was that an animal? Um, he uh, said honest? he put a whole new, almost a whole new bag in for this weekend, so yeah. I'm, not, I'm not too sure. He seems to be the best at that. He can just adjust to a new bag so well. Like, I feel like... Yeah, he said he had a bunch in there, all rollers. <laughs> all <laughs> practice, one. But that... That was the weirdest roller I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe it was a terrible approach shot. Right? <laughs> now that we think about it, maybe if he was going roller there, man, he really has lost a step. <laughs> On to the seventh, 1,200 plus feet, a great par five. I think one of the best holes on this course. You're going to have to get up the fairway as far as possible off the tee, keeping the mandatory in mind, and then it's about pushing as close to that water as you can before making that crossing shot. He's just going hyzer again. But this one's oh, not really this doing danger. it for him. This is in danger. Yeah, that's not a good place. My personal favorite hole on the property. <laughs> I, I think the 6 7 stretch really shows the potential of Glendevere. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the elevation that you have on 6 and just the, the shot shape in the water carry and all the things that you have here on 7, mm -hmm. the length and yeah. the landing zones, it's, it's all here on 6 and 7. That's Simon really making the correction off of Eagle's line. Yeah, that's taking sorry. it wide. This is the thing, though, that with this win that they have, things were flipping over, and that green was coming into play, which is pretty incredible. But it is it because is there. I think that the caddy book, I believe, says that green is 560 feet off the tee. So pretty nuts that they're just, you know, a pretty casual looking throw from Simon. Well, yeah, he's whoa, there. slow it's down. It's 80%. Remember, he yeah. said he's got 550. Yep. And he's, sure, he's not lying. They're going really overstable. Yeah, that's going to be out there left. It's, it's got a long way to go for this hole. Ricky is who I think is the most underrated power thrower in our game. I think he throws just as far as any of these guys, um, especially this year. Yeah. You go on a... Pretty tough spot to get to the ideal landing zone. Wow. That's a really good effort from there. That's ideal. That's wow. To get around. there. He's still going to be 440-ish. Boom. Wow. That 
shots. That's a really nice forehand as well from Rick. I, like Ricky's tee shot was such a better angle, and yet him and Eagle are in essentially the same spot now. Better angle, but much longer, I think. And Paul now has the flat spot, and that is absolutely perfect. Simon going mid range? Or is that fair with you? That's definitely mid range. Yeah, it looks like a mid range to me. Just your common mid range second <coughs> shot on a 1,300 foot par five. So, how big is this shot going to be? He's in the 420 range. Uh, okay. Yeah. Weapon. I like a lot of things about it. Mile is the most overrated course. I mean. Ricky likes that. He's going to try oh, it. Really? As Ooh, this needs to hurry. That's a danger. I think it might skip and bounce. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's just a Luna. Wow. Pretty good, but none of those are gimmies. It is swirling, and that is a high-rise basket. And the, the bowl that this basket is in really makes that approach seem like you're a lot closer than you actually are. I, f I felt like every time we've got up there on the green, all the shots that I thought were about 15 feet <laughs> were about 25, and then you know, everything else. If it was a little Not short, great. it was really short. So... Once you get around the corner, you see where your, where your disc actually is. It's yeah, as you can see, those flags are ripping. So, oh, now they're just barely off at Ricky two holes in a row. That's a great putt. Really. Who's that? Go for it. Some really good starts getting put together here. And Simon, after that double bogey on hole one, I mean, that's a hold you just play for par. If he does that right now, he's five under. That five under, not good enough. No, sure isn't. Why would it be? Six in a row now for Eagle. Must be nice. Taking a look at hole eight here, 438 foot par three. You've got a mandatory that forces you left of the first tree that you flew past there. And then you're kind of going up the hill, low ceiling. I think the tough thing about this hole is it's still like 80 or 90 feet once you crest that hill that's flat up under that low ceiling. You just don't see a lot of people having success pushing the disc all the way back there. We saw Eagle, one of three people on the day to birdie this hole in round one. Don't believe he's going to be recreating the magic here with that air shot turning over. Simon, this is the more traditional play here. We see a lot of rollers. Oh, my God, dude. But that's a very common. That's actually the more common mistake is to even miss it more than that to the right. Yeah. Very technical roller here. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of air before it gets down to the ground. And I just feel like whatever Paul's throwing has just this is fast, so it's just never going to stop right there. You know, it's going to go down to the right side unless you get more cut on it. Or you take the one more gap exactly. left. which is a lot tighter, but probably would be the be the move. Then you could embrace that, that curl. Ricky's oh. Liking this. Loving this now. Go in. Whoa. So good. 
And still outside the yeah. circle. One of the best air shots you'll ever see. Got the height right. What was the birdie ratio on here? Oh, not much. 7%. Ooh. Oh, that would have made 8. 7% of the field, so there was a total of 8 players. One of it, which was this man right here. Great too, man. Incredible shot, and then a great putt. That's what it takes to get a birdie uh -uh. on hole 8. Right there in the mid difficulty as far as birdies go, as scoring average goes, 3.12 average, and that's just the ninth most difficult hole. So, really showing how tough Glendivir disc golf course is. Not really that much trouble you can get on on this hole. I mean, you're putting a roller down or air shot, and you're getting up to those guardian trees. You got, you know, mm -hmm. at most 150 in with a bad shot. Yeah, I mean, you could cut roll it onto the golf green left, but <laughs> who would do that, right? <laughs> Oh, no, <laughs> I don't know anybody. Oh, no. But you know, on hole nine is <laughs> hole nine's a good hole too. It's long. It's par five. It's thirteen hundred and forty-two feet up the hill with a little bit of gap to make you just a little nervous as you go off the tee. So you can't go with every bit of distance you might want. You got a couple bunkers here. You've got OB on the right, defined by the bushes, and then just just to kind of make it that much more difficult. If you leak a little long, there is a OB waiting for you about 35 feet past the basket. I think it's the longest hole I've ever played in disc golf. Yeah, yeah it's like a weekend hike. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Like, grab your dog, take a walk, <laughs> come back at dusk. Woo! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's a big air shot. That's over five. You think... Oh, no, that's definitely over five air shots. <laughs> <laughs> you think it's going to look small in about five seconds? Uh, yes. What? Oh, uh, I saw winds, a leaf. The blowing. wind, the wind yeah. wreaking havoc. Yeah. So I mean, it's outdriven yeah. Eagles roller. That wind definitely makes this hole play like seventeen hundred feet. As far as rollers go, they just really like the grass being wet, the wind blowing the direction it's blowing. It just made those big rollers just really not. Kind of tough. There is an out of bounds line uh, out there to the left that can really come into play if you don't throw a flippy enough disc. If you want to birdie this hole, I think that where that fairway begins, I think you need to be about 80 feet past the beginning of it to really be in position to get a long enough second shot to put yourself in position on that third. You're talking about the mo for the for the ball golf course. Yes. Excuse me. Yes, of course. So you can see like the little cut of grass there. You need to be well past the beginning of that. I like Paul just going with the helping win there, not really trying to get the Anheuser down there, but using the win to his advantage right and there. Talk to me. Does this feel like Macbeth playing for par? It's not something we've seen too yeah. many times. This feels to me like Macbeth conceding par. I'll, I'll say maybe after the next shot. Because he's not even at the crest. It, he's yeah, the, he can't get there. No, that's that's playing for par. Eagle not playing for par. Is this going to flip up ever? Because there it, is OB over there. If it keeps, it doesn't keep standing. If I keep standing up, that's going to go so far. But isn't there OB over there? It's pretty far to the left. Green. Yeah. Safe. He was a little worried too, maybe, yeah. but... It turns out it is safe. Big shot. Ricky going air shot, air shot here. And this is that incredibly overstable yeah. disc we saw him throw on the last par five off the tee that yeah. just went way loose. <laughs> that is just a hog. And that's just to get to the very crest of the hill. He has a shot from there. But will he take it? I mean, that's yeah. a tough from left to it's right hot. with, yeah. the, with um, not being left enough, maybe. Yeah, it's tough. What wow. just happened to that disc? Bouncy. Look at that wind. Yeah. 
Simon looking like he's going mid range, and that is just burnt out early. That's it's going to be a tough save, honestly. It's, it's a very touchy delicate green. Well, you did just see Paul's dropped 80 feet yeah. out of the air. I wouldn't. Maybe he didn't see that shot. The wind is so swirly right now. Sit, sit. No, just sit. Uh oh. Oh, man. Unforced air. He, well, he's probably staring down about 350. He doesn't care about anybody's distance. Actually, that's probably more than that. Is this also testing the bunker? I think it's perfect. Just oh, wow. Testing a lot of different OBs, but stays Holy in. It just circle. Deep. <laughs> and three. With a sidearm approach. All with that patented touch with the putter. Oh. Still fading down the hill. Okay, that was looking good for a while and ended up being not his best. I, I think those are both within about 10 feet of going out of bounds long. Yep. Good approach for Simon. Get up. This hole just turns you, like best laid plans, right? You're like throwing these great shots. Rick crushing it up there. You're thinking, oh, maybe birdie, at least par. One little mistake, and it's just bogey or worse. Oh, and Paul squeaks it. <laughs> a good par save. Cow, a great par save. Yeah. Good putt. Simon in disbelief. It was pretty loony. Oh, and to get the stick. <laughs> birdie. We've seen a birdie here. <laughs> back to back birdies for Eagle on hole nine. I mean. Okay, now let's put it into geez. perspective. Paul McBeth, greatest player ever. Yeah. Has, uh, has a lot. Super okay. sport. Are we going to do that right now? <laughs> <laughs> Back to my point. He throws really good shots all the way down the fairway, makes the same putt that Eagle makes for birdie, and he rips. Well, Eagle rips right now. Seven under on the front nine. No one's even really close to him right now with that score. That is, uh, I mean, I guess Kevin Jones is 600 in the front. That's incredible. It is. Eagle outclassing the field right now. Three-shot advantage over Paul McBeth. That was impressive. Yeah, and I think it's his tournament right now. I mean, his skill set is perfect for this. Let's see, let's see what we've got coming. Thank you so much, guys, for supporting the coverage. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks to all the fans that are out there in person. We see a lot of Jomez fans out there on the course, and we appreciate those guys as well because we know most of them are tuning in anyway. They got to hear what Big Germ's got to say about what they just saw. <laughs> Thank you, guys. We'll be right back with the back nine, round two, Disc Golf Pro Tours, Portland Open.